Hey everyone, Nick DiRobertis here, teaching you financial modeling. Today I'm here to talk a little bit more about what we're focusing on in this class and what is a financial model. So this class is a skills and technique based course. Um, so it's not let's go learn the laundry list of financial models. Uh, it's more, let's learn a general process and the skills necessary to be able to build financial models so you can go out and build whatever model you choose. Um, so generally, we're going to look at you know fairly simple uh, models, but that'll be just the base model. And then we're going to extend that model in a number of various ways, like uh, sensitivity analysis, scenario analysis, Monte Carlo simulation, uh, these kind of things that are going to give you a much greater understanding of the problem than just doing the basic model for the problem. Um, so techniques and skills over concrete models and uh, focus on extensions to the models and being able to uh, really, uh, you know, whatever problem you happen to be modeling, uh, really get a good understanding of everything that's going on by uh, being able to model kind of the variance of your result as well as the original expected result. So what is a financial model? What is a model in general? So we can think of a model as something actually very simple. It's just a process which converts inputs to outputs. So, you know, that's a very general definition, but, you know, you can have a model for nearly anything. So we need a general definition. Um, so when you view it in this kind of context that a model just takes some inputs and converts them to outputs. Um, that really um, gives us a concrete uh, way of thinking about the model um, rather than you know just thinking about, you know we're doing evaluation of a company, we're estimating the weighted average cost of capital, all of these particulars. Ultimately, it's just to convert your inputs to outputs. Um, so we can make this a little more concrete by looking at a couple examples of models. So here, first, we can think about a retirement problem. Um, so this is a problem where, um, you know, someone is saving for retirement. They're earning uh, wages over time, and they're saving a portion of that, and they want to save that and invest that money uh, so that they can then retire at the end of life. Uh, so figuring out how much uh, this person actually needs to save to be able to hit their retirement goals um, is you know, the problem that we're thinking about modeling here. So when we... Um, you know, think about the real world problem that we are dealing with. Um, we can also kind of split that real world process um, into the same kind of structure. Um, so we're going to have inputs into the real world process and we're going to have outputs. Um, and our model is ultimately going to try and represent that middle piece, the process. So um, in the real situation for the retirement problem, uh, someone is earning uh, wages from their job and then they're saving a portion of those wages. So those are our inputs, uh, you know, how much are they bringing in um, in cash and then how much of that are they actually putting into savings. And then the, the process which converts the inputs to the outputs <clears throat> for the retirement real problem is the investment process, right? Uh, you know, buying the investments um, and then holding them and earning, um, you know, dividends and capital gains on those investments, ultimately selling those investments at a later point 
uh, that's the real world process. <clears throat> and then the output or result from that process is that this person uh, you know, has a certain amount of cash from those investments and so they can retire as a result. So when we think about modeling this, um, so our model is going to take the place of the real world process. So our model is basically trying to capture uh, this investment process, right? Uh, you know, whatever, how much money is coming in, investing that in whatever uh, securities, earning a certain return on those, uh, you know, selling those at a later date, um, all these kinds of things uh, could go into the model. And then the inputs to the model um, would be our, you know, tangible things that we can measure, which capture, uh, you know, the inputs to the real world problem. So uh, certainly the, the cash flows they're getting from their wages, uh, we can measure that. Um, we can think about their, how much they're saving in terms of a savings rate of what, you know, what percentage of their wages are they saving in each year. Um, and as an input into the investment process, we can think about the interest rates that uh, this person's gonna earn on their investments. And then, uh, you know, coming out as a result of the model, we have the future value of the cash flows, which again represents, you know, how much cash this person is gonna have when they retire. Or, uh, you know, if we have a specific uh, amount of desired cash, uh, then we could figure out how long would it take for this person to get enough cash to retire. Uh, so, you know, the model is all about, uh, you know, approximating some real world process. And here is a relatively simple real world process. But the same thing can be applied to more complicated uh, situations. So definitely more complicated is thinking about how to value a company, especially like a large, you know, multinational corporation with all these different business segments. Um, certainly it is complex to come up with a uh, relatively accurate valuation for that company. Um, so the real world situation that we're modeling is actually the business operations of this, uh, you know, whatever company that we're valuing. So if we think about, uh, say, Microsoft, uh, you know, Microsoft is primarily in the business of selling software, right? Um, and so, uh, you know, the inputs to uh, the real world situation here is that Microsoft is creating that software. And then the process uh, is they sell that software and the output is that they get uh, the cash proceeds um, from selling that and that um, leads to uh, the stock reaching a certain price as a result. So then if we we're gonna think about building a model for the valuation of Microsoft, uh, what would we think about? So, you know, again, for the inputs on the model, it has to be what we can actually tangibly measure um, or at least, uh, you know, guess at. Um, so these, you know, have to be numeric values for the most part. Um, and so, you know, Microsoft creating software is, is quite a big thing. Um, we would have to come up with more tangible things that go into creating that software. Um, so, you know, how much uh, are they having to pay in salaries uh, for the software developers to produce that? How much uh, are they putting into marketing to sell the product? Um, you know, how much did they pay uh, to finance the company to get the capital to to create this software in the first place? Uh, you know, how much is uh, the the sales growing? Um, all these kinds of things uh, would go into the inputs of this valuation model, and then the model um, would be capturing um, you know the business. Um, so it can be, you know, from a couple different perspectives, you can have more of an operational model where you try to actually dig into all their operations and come up with cash flows and everything, or it can be just, you know, based on the top line, uh, financials as a more aggregated view. Uh, but ultimately the model is trying to capture, uh, the business process that, uh, Microsoft goes through to generate value, uh, for its shareholders. 
and then the outputs from our model are going to be the stock price and and returns on that stock so regardless of the complexity of the underlying problem that you're dealing with you can ultimately boil it down to there are inputs there are outputs and there's some process and then when we go to model that we think about what tangibly can we measure in those inputs and outputs and how do we approximate this process uh, with a model that's the general idea um, so that concludes um, thinking about what is a model and basically what we're talking in this class so next time we'll come back to talk about the tools and skills uh, that we're going to cover as part of this course so thanks for listening and see you next time